you now know how to compute the inverse of a 3x3 three three matrix, in theory. But how does this turn out in practice? Will it be a lot of work? Let us take a look at an explicit example in this video. Here we have our matrix A, 1 to 2, 3, 1, minus 1, 1, 0, minus 1. And the question is, determine the inverse of matrix A, if possible. So we know what to do. We have to augment A with the 3x3 three three identity matrix. And then we have to reduce until we have the identity matrix on the left. And then we've gotten the inverse of A on the right. So let us get started. Here we have our A, our identity matrix. I want to turn the A into the identity matrix. Well, we are lucky because we have a 1 already over here. So uh, now we want zeros over there and over there. It's possible by subtracting minus 3 times and here subtracting minus 1 times. Minus 3 times 1 equals minus 3 plus 3 equals 0. Minus 3 times 2 equals minus 6 plus 1 equals minus 5. Minus 3 times 2 equals minus 6 uh, plus minus 1 equals minus 7. So 0 minus 5 minus 7. And now we have to do the same with all the right hand sides. So minus 3 times the first row adding to the second row. So we get a minus 3 0 0 has to be added to 0 1 0. So we get a minus 3 1 0. So at the start of this algorithm, the row reduction steps here are quite complicated and here they are quite easy. And if you go further, it becomes the other way around. Then add minus 1 times the first row to the third row. Minus 1 times 1 equals minus 1 plus 1 equals 0. Minus 1 times 2 equals minus 2. Added to 0 equals minus 2. Minus 1 times 2 equals minus 2. Added to minus 1 equals minus 3. There we are. And then we add this row, minus 1 times to the last row. So we get minus 1 plus 0 equals minus 1, 0 plus 0 equals 0, and 0 plus 1 equals 1. We have done our first step. Then we want a 1 over there, but we do not want fractions. Trust me, you do not want to do this computation with fractions if you can avoid them. So we could switch over here, but then we get a, a minus 2 and we still don't have 1. But we can do the following trick. We can subtract this row three times over here. Because if we add minus three times uh, the last row to the second row, we get minus three times zero equals zero. But minus three times minus two equals minus, minus six equals six. So we get six minus five equals one. So then we get a one over there, and then we can avoid fractions. And minus 3 times minus 3 equals 9 added to 2. And then we have to add minus 3 times the third row to the second row. So minus 3 times minus 1 equals 3. Added to minus 3 equals 0. This is still 1. This is also minus 3. And then we are over here. And now we have a 1 over there. And we have avoided the fractions. Because you have to do all those computations. Uh, well, most of them by heart. It's annoying to have fractions. And we can go on. We want a 0 over here. So, plus 2. We leave the first row. We leave the second rows. And we add 2 times the second row to the third row. 0 plus 0 equals 0. 2 minus 2 equals 0. 4 minus 2 equals 1. Ah, that's lucky. We need a one there later on, and we have it already. Then two times the second row has to be added to the third row. Zero plus minus one equals minus one. Two plus zero equals two, and minus six plus one equals minus five. So there we are. If you would have a normal linear system, now you could we are in a shown form over here, so you could start uh, to solve your system. However, 
We don't need a echelon form. We need a reduced echelon form. We need a identity matrix over here. So we can go on a bit with some more row reduction. Uh, we want zeros over here and over here and later on over there. Well, getting zeros over here and over there, that's not such a big problem now because we have a one over here already. So subtract the third row two times from the second row and from the first row. So we get zeros over there. Now, the row reduction over here is no problem anymore, but now we have to be careful over here. If we add the third row minus two times to the second row, we get minus two times minus one equals two. Zero plus two equals two. We get minus two times two equals minus four. One minus four equals minus three. Minus two times minus five equals ten. Ten minus three equals seven. So that becomes our new second row. Then for the first row, minus two times minus one equals two. Added to 1 equals 3. Uh, minus 2 times 2 equals minus 4. Added to 0 equals minus 4. And minus 2 times minus 5 equals 10. Added to 0 equals 10. So now, the, the, uh, now it becomes a bit messier on the right hand side. Almost there. Only a 0 over there is needed. So add the second row minus 2 times to the first row. So you get the identity matrix there over there. The last two rows will be the same, and then minus 2 times 2 equals minus 4, added to 3 equals minus 1. Minus 3 times minus 2 equals 6, added to the minus 4 equals 2. And minus 2 times 7 equals minus 14, added to 10 equals minus 4. So, now we have our A inverse over here. Well, as you see, it's quite a long computation, and there's pl there are plenty of opportunities to make errors. So if you have computed your A inverse, it's always nice to check whether you have done it correctly. And a check is not so hard because A times A inverse has to yield the identity matrix. So let us see. Here we have our A, here we have our A inverse, and let's see whether, whether we get indeed the identity matrix. So it goes to the row column rule. So we get minus 1 plus 4 minus 2 equals 1. So that one is fine. Minus 3 uh, plus 2 plus 1 equals 0. OK. Minus 1 plus 0 plus 1 equals 0. That's fine. So the first column is fine. And usually, if you have made a mistake, you will already have noticed it, because this first column will probably already be wrong. But now we want to be entirely sure, so let's do the other columns as well. Uh, 2 minus 6 plus 4 equals 0. 6 minus 3 minus 2 equals 1, 2 plus 0 minus 2 equals 0, so that is fine too. Last one, minus 4 plus 14 minus 10, so minus 4 plus 14 e equals 10 minus 10 equals 0, yeah, that's correct. Minus 12 plus 7 plus 5 minus 12 plus 7 plus 5 is 0, yeah, okay, correct. And the last one, minus 4 plus 0, minus minus 5 plus 5 equals 1. So that's indeed correct. So as you see, this inverse is indeed correct. And always do this little check whenever you compute yourself the inverse of a bigger matrix.